dollars. Away from that, a research funded by a German, the German Konrad Adner Sifstan Foundation is estimating that over 200 young people have been recruited from the northern part of the country into some deadly jihadist groups operating in the sub-region. What makes this situation worrying is that after undergoing such training from the camps in the Sahel, these young groups are reintegrated into their villages of origin to engage in religious conversion, posing a security threat to the nation. The hotspots identified for such activities are in the five regions of the north, attributable to the porous borders and the high poverty levels. A situation the West African Network for Peace Building warns could escalate if the security intelligence uh, is not enhanced. Albert Yaoyang is with the national network, uh, is a national network coordinator of OneEP, and he joins us via Zoom for more on this. Mr. Yaoyang, thank you very much for joining us here on Join News Prime. You are warning that the situation could get out of hand if not controlled. Is that a suggestion that your own monitoring corroborates these findings? Uh, good evening to you and your viewers. Uh, if you read the report uh, thoroughly, uh, you would realize that there are some of the contents that corroborate um, some realities on the ground um, within the country and out of the country. So when I'm talking about within the country, I'm talking about our own vulnerabilities that could then serve as a bedrock, you know, for anybody to um, infiltrate, you know, or take advantage of. And if you also look at the dynamics across the borders, you know, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Burkina Faso, in particular, in uh, recently in our uh, neighboring uh, Togo, there have been a number of incidences. In some of the incidences, the people have fled into Ghana, you know, yes, in, into the other communities that are in Ghana, and security have been strengthened and all that. You know, so if you look at the dynamics across the, you know, um, the region, the sub-region, and also the fact that there is some level of relationship between Ghana, you know, and these countries. Um, and even in some of the areas you have, you know, people who are living in one country but working in the other country. When I say working, for instance, having a farm or crossing over to engage in businesses. And there have been a number of people that uh, we have interacted with. And they tell us, sometimes, for instance, in Burkina Faso, they tell them to close their shops. Suddenly, you know, people are told to close their shops and then they too have to move. They go over there to buy some wares and suddenly they come back without buying those wares, you know. And also the movements of some of our young people into these neighboring countries like Bali, in Burkina Faso, in Guinea, you know, to engage in mine operations. And mm -hmm. some are informing their colleagues to come and join them, despite the fact that there are these threats. And, know, and that is what is curious, because we have always known that young people are the target and that they are likely to be recruited into these groups. But we are seeing an increasing number and it's becoming more attractive to young people. What do you think is accounting for this growing, you know, cases of recruitment of young people, especially in areas that we already see as vulnerable to, to such, uh, you know, recruitment? You will realize that, and there are a number of reports that point to that, there is a growing youth bulge. Um, we produce a lot of them, and some of them are not skilled. You go to many of the market centers, these young people are just roaming about and engaging in menial jobs. There are some of them on the street. There are some that are involved in this tricycle riding, you know. And if you look, some of the town is like a sea, you know. That tells you that there is a problem, you know. And so there are the push and pull factors. So within our own countries, as I indicated, if there are some vulnerabilities, probably disgruntlement, unemployment, okay. you know, social services, there are some of the communities or, or populations that we see not a deliberate attempt, but there seems to be that discrimination, you know, against certain groups. So if these persist, uh, then there is no communication, you know, with these people, then they, they, they tend to seek, you know, recognition and, and, and support from elsewhere. And obviously, these uh, violent extremist agents are always looking for some of those opportunities to leverage, you know, so that they can recruit and then force some into the, the, the operations. So, I mean, the dynamics on the ground, you know, uh, suggest that we need to up our game 
we should not be complacent for the fact that Ghana has not had an incident across the borders in our neighboring countries. Yeah. Burkina, Togo started, I mean, in November, they had one. Just within the half of this year, they have recorded about four incidences mm. with several casualties. Some of them children, you know. At, Indeed, and, and the National Security report. itself said they had followed uh, some situations, what potentially could have been a trouble for us as far as this issue of terrorism is concerned. I'm grateful for your time here on Join News Prime. You had the network coordinator with OneEp speaking to us here on the possible threat of terrorism in Ghana.